Cozy Wing. I'm August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads. This is the start of another weekly reading vlog. Boom! Just like that, it is summer. The windows are open because it's hot. I had to completely transition my closet to summer stuff already. And yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> it's so hot. All of a sudden I like woke up and it was like 80 degrees yesterday. It's great. There's a train in the background if you hear that as well. But yeah, I just had a vlog and filmed a vlog a few days ago and I'm starting another one because I'm still not done with Light by M. John Harrison. I will link the first vlog down below if you missed it because I am now halfway through the book. I'm on page 143. I still have not been making reading a priority and it makes me really sad because I'm really enjoying this book and I really miss reading. I think lately I've just been so excited by like the weather and hanging out with people and making plans and having a social life. What a concept! What a concept to go and actually like hang out with people instead of with my nose buried in a book all the time. Um, it feels really good, but I want to finish this book in this vlog and then hopefully start another one. Either another book with another vlog, something like that. So where I'm at currently in light, we are still bouncing. Every chapter is from a different perspective, but we're following three different characters. The first is Michael and he is a serial killer. He's been plagued by this like weird dark entity called the Schrader that makes him paranoid and freaked out and believe that the only way to get the Schrader off of his back is to kill people. He is also working and works in a company like a startup that is trying to make a quantum computer. Sorry about the train if you hear it. I honestly love the sound of trains and I'm sorry if it's distracting and you don't, <laughs> but I find it so like romantic. So that's Michael and then another character we have is Saria Mao. She is a K-ship. She's a rocket ship basically living in the year 2400. And I should say too that Michael is from the year 1999. Saria Mao is a spaceship and her consciousness has left her human body and she is now a spaceship that goes around. And basically she finds like this artifact that she wants to know more about. So she's visiting all these other planets in order to find more information on this artifact. And we still don't really know what it is or what it does. She both envies and hates, like loathes humans. It's very interesting, her as like a spaceship, having a spaceship as a character, but who used to be a human and her consciousness is just like, been sucked out of her body. The other character we have is with like two other characters. There's Tig and then there's Ed and Tig is a tank farmer and we're this book just like doesn't give you information it gives and talks to you as if you're from this world and you should know what's happening but you just really don't so tig is a tank farmer which basically holds people's consciousnesses and they are able to experience like a completely different reality and ed is one of those people who has been living in a tank and all of a sudden he is very like rudely taken out of the tank and now tig and ed are kind of like on the run together escaping these like crazy cyborg fake people. Again, it's so confusing. I'm halfway through the book and we still don't have like hardly any answers, but I'm loving it. The writing style is super gorgeous. It's very surreal and bizarre, but so human and futuristic and galactic, but also just so stunning and it's so bizarre and absurdist and out there that it works for me personally. I like when authors like just don't give us information and it's like we're being held at kind of like arm's distance. We are very distanced from these characters and we don't really know like their purpose, their motives, their backstories at all. We're just thrown right into it and then every other chapter is bouncing between these three characters. So personally right now, my favorite to follow is Michael because I love the 90s vibes. I love that he's plagued by this like dark entity and the serial killer things. He studies quantum computers and there's a lot of like cat motifs throughout this book as well, which is really interesting. So I love reading Michael's perspective the most so far. Then I really like Saria Mao's. And then lastly is Tig and Ed because they are just like really gross characters. There's a lot of references in here to like bodily fluids and sex, like a lot of like lust and animalistic primal things. And it's very interesting and it doesn't put me off necessarily from reading, but it's just like my least favorite because I want to know more about like the emotional side and the world building, which I think is done a little bit more in Michael and Saria Mao's like stories. I have no idea how these are all gonna link together, but there are already like repetitive mentions of certain items or certain feelings that while reading all of a sudden I'm like, I feel like I've already read this. It feels very familiar. Um, and then I have to remember like maybe similar words are used in each chapter or similar items are found or described or certain feelings. 
So there are underlying things that kind of connect these stories together, but they're very minuscule in comparison to like the bigger, broader theme and the different time periods that these people are living in and the different technology and civilizations. So it's really, really good. Definitely recommend looking at that first vlog to see my reading experience when first starting this. But yeah, that is what I'm gonna be reading for this vlog and finishing up. Thank you all so incredibly much for being here, friends. I hope you can sit back and relax and enjoy. And I also just wanna say thank you all so much for the kind comments on my last vlog. I'm so bad at responding to comments, but like I read every single one and they seriously warm my heart and I screenshot them and I look at them when I'm having a bad day and like, you all are just amazing and someday soon, hopefully I'll have the courage to like actually respond. I just feel like when I put it into words, it almost takes away how much it, I appreciate it and doesn't come across as like how genuine I just want to like, ah, just thank you. Your comments seriously make my day and it makes me so happy. And yeah, I hope you all are doing really well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will check in with you very soon.
friends who has been here since last summer it is the return of the iced coffee it is iced coffee season <laughs> does anyone remember last summer i would just always entice you with my iced coffees it's so good it is summer it's feeling like summer it's hot out i'm wearing just a big old baggy t-shirt feeling so good and yesterday was like the most perfect day ever it was so nice i ended up reading over like 150 pages in my book which I will get to and chat more about because things are happening and it's amazing. I went to Goodwill because I had so much stuff to donate and went shopping and got just like, I didn't really get anything super cool there. It was just a lot of like, almost like PJ shirts. <laughs> so um, I did find some stuff. It's my, one of my best friend's 30th birthday party tomorrow and it's a theme. So I had to go and get some clothes for the theme, which is really fun. So hopefully I can take you all along with me for that tomorrow, just a little bit. Um, a little bit of party stuff. I'm so excited to celebrate my friend. It's his 30th birthday and like gotta go, gotta go all dressed up. So I'm really excited for that. Did some grocery shopping as well. It was like so hot outside yesterday. The inside of my car said it was over 100 degrees. So it was toasty. And then my sister and I spontaneously went to a park to go watch the sunset. And my heart is so full. I think there's so much to say about growing for yourself because when I first started this channel, um, kind of for me at least in retrospect and hindsight, it was because I was so like lonely and feeling really alone and I wanted to connect with people specifically through literature and I would go on all these adventures by myself all the time. Uh, if you've been here for a long time, you might know that. I traveled a lot by myself, I went to fun things by myself, um, and that's fine and I love that and I still made memories. Um, so yesterday I was planning on seeing the sunset by myself anyway and like just bringing my book and like going and it was just such a beautiful day outside and I wanted to spend it outside. But last minute I was like, I'm gonna just see if my sister's free. Let's just like call her. And she was and now we have these like beautiful memories together of this experience that we had and we shared. Um, this beautiful sunset, laughing together, talking, catching up, taking photos and videos together. And it just like makes my life so much more rich. And I feel like that is like the theme of this year for me so far has been like learning to reach out to people and to experience things with other people. Um, so if you're like me and you're an introvert and you have a hard time with doing that sometimes, as someone who feels like they're growing in a way where hanging out with people and being social feels way more authentic now because I feel way more authentically me almost. I don't know if that makes sense. I've just been on this like really big self-discovery thing and being self-employed and, and not just feeling like my life was a series of like obligations and burning myself out to the point where I felt like I had no social battery. I'm now at a place where like I feel comfortable and natural reaching out to people and wanting to share experiences with them and that's why this season specifically i feel like since april has just been hanging out with so many friends and not reading as much and this might just be a phase of my life that i'm in right now but i'm so happy with it like the photos and videos and memories of like hanging out spontaneously for a sunset with my sister yesterday with some serious alliteration like that those are going to be with me forever and that like makes me so emotional i don't know i think um as someone who yeah i used to just like vlog because i wanted to share my life and my experiences with others and now the channel has grown there's almost four thousand of you here <laughs> and it's amazing and i can still share my life and my experiences but i feel like my life has done this huge like pivot towards me hanging out with other people and creating memories with other people and anyway that's just my little like I guess more personal life update of where I've been and it feels so good and I'm so happy and socializing with people doesn't drain me as much and I think it's because I do feel so much better in my own skin these days and I'm feeling so like refreshed and happy and I don't want to isolate myself and I think that's also because of my self-esteem all of a sudden like now I'm just feeling so much better about myself it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a mask all the time when I'm hanging out with people and it feels like I'm 
just who I am and I want people to experience who I am and I feel so much more calm and I, I feel so much more present and I don't know how to explain it but like I'm going through like these huge like self-discovery things right now and it's amazing and I'm happy that you can be here with me for it. Yeah I'm just like a really big like gushy mush ball right now <laughs> honestly like I'm just like so grateful and like sappy and it was just such a perfect day yesterday. Um, anyway, light. I'm John Harrison. I lost my spot last night because I fell asleep while reading. Okay, looks like I probably landed right on page 250. I am so close to the end, look at that. There are 310 pages. So I only have 60 pages left. I'm going to finish this this morning. I'm very excited. Yesterday while I was reading, I sat outside for a little bit and read and read while having my morning coffee. Like I was just feeling so intrigued by this because things really picked up. I would say probably around the like 200 page mark, all of a sudden these characters that we've just been separated by, all of a sudden we're starting to piece together and they're referencing characters from the other stories. So things finally are clicking as to these different trajectories and these different characters and their plots in their stories and how do they actually interact with each other and how do they actually connect in any way around the 200 page mark we got it so I just like wanted to keep reading I was like no way that's how these are connected that's how these stories are connected it's amazing and there were so many gorgeous passages I was annotating like wild let's see if I can find a few for you because it is so beautiful so it's a lot about quantum physics a lot about space travel and these characters kind of like finding themselves amidst all of this technological change and discovery which is really cool there are some really eerie moments and writing in here that were actually very creative creepy and unsettling and bone chilling, which I absolutely love. Um, and that had to do with a lot of the quantum physics discoveries and how it affects people emotionally to see too much. There's also some characters in here that are then able to prophesize the future and it talks about the weight of that. Um, so it's almost like having access to see and do more things with yourself and the world around you and with technology, but how does that affect us as humans? It still has like a very negative impact because we're seeing and doing things that we just honestly probably we're not made to do we're just getting too smart almost which i think about constantly with like social media and technology like were we really supposed to be able to see what somebody on the other side of the world is having for breakfast and what their fitness routine is and like i don't think we are supposed to be able to know that but we're beyond that point now where we have access to absolutely everything and we can reach out to anyone at any time to communicate. I think about it constantly, okay? Um, so this is a gorgeous little snippet here of some writing. It reads, space, but not empty. A kind of darkness wrapped over itself like the bow wave of the Alcabir warp, but worse than any of that. And the Alcabir warp is probably, like this book just, like I said at the beginning of this vlog, it just throws you in with a bunch of terminology and vocabulary and words that are very specific to the science fiction world. So I think it's one of those, but worse than any of that. The cold water of a meaningless, unsalted sea. The information super substance, substrate of some universal algorithm. Lights which shivered and writhed away from him in shoals. Yeah, it's just that kind of writing. It's so, so beautiful. Oh, well actually on page 145, I underlined some information here and that was actually the first references to another character that we've been following, but in someone else's story. And I thought that was really cool. So I'm absolutely loving this. I have a photo shoot at four o'clock today that I have to travel a little bit for, um, but it won't take super long. So I'm gonna curl up here and I'm gonna finish light if possible before my photo session and then come back to you at the very end of the day, hopefully when I'm done with it or tomorrow and let you know my final thoughts. And then hopefully, depending on time, pick out a new book. I'm so behind on my May TBR and even my Goodreads challenge, I'm very behind on. So I wanna pick up something that will be very engrossing, especially now that it's like very summery outside and it feels very summery. I 
I just want a book that I can fly through. And luckily enough, like once I started getting around that like 150, 200 page mark in light, I just started plowing right through. So I definitely want to pick a book, my next book to be something that I'm really propelled into and it's a page turner and I don't really want to put it down. And then hopefully next week's reading vlog will be just reading outside as much as possible because I, that has turned into this summer's favorite pastime already is just sitting outside and reading. I've done it so much already. I am very excited. So I will check in with you all a little bit later. macaroni my friends just finished reading light as the sun is setting on this fine friday evening i finished it and it was so stunning it was so stunning everything made sense at the end basically but in a very bizarre way with quantum physics and math and science and space and time and relativity oh my god this book if you're a fan of the sirens of titan by kurt vonnegut and Everything Everywhere All at Once, the movie. May I introduce you to Light? Holy shit, it's so good. I was annotating like mad near the end here. Like the writing is stunning, the story is bizarre, but it all wrapped up so well. Like I cannot express how well this book wrapped up and it is a trilogy. So this is book one of the Kefahuchi Tract series. Don't really know if I'm pronouncing that right, but just phonetically, that's what it looks like, Kefahuchi. The world building is nuts. The character building is nuts. I just don't, when I read something like this, I wonder how somebody's brain can work like this to write something like this. It's so world driven. The vocabulary is wild. The written language is wild in terms of like the different names for planets and how seamlessly it's interwoven into the narrative as if it's so familiar to this author but for us we're like what are you talking about but there's just so much confidence these are the spaceship names these are the planet names these are the molecular nanotechnology biology science math components these are the virtual reality simulators everything had its own unique name which made it extra interesting to read this just so well done <laughs> near the end there it felt like i was watching a movie things were happening Happening so quickly in this book that and we were bouncing the chapters pretty quickly but every single time it was so cinematic and emotional and emotive and beautiful and like very palpable these feelings that these characters were experiencing and going through a lot of talk about like existentialism and nihilism as well what happens when you have access to almost everything except for being able to view the world in multiple dimensions or being able to access every piece of information ever that's ever existed which is why i compare it to like everything everywhere all at once where it's like everything is nothing and nothing is everything 
that's a repetitive like motif even at the beginning in like my last vlog I read aloud something that said something kind of similar where everything kind of looks the same you look at waves in the ocean they all look the same but there's not the same thing twice and it's just ah it's stuff like that that blows my mind and that's why I love literature and that's why I love that I have found my groove and my rhythm and the books that I enjoy because it's stuff like this that make me think and make me question and make me like realize or re-remember how bizarre it is to even be alive the amount of like atoms and molecules needed to create just the human body and this physical book that i'm touching the brain that's wired but what is the brain made up of and then the stuff in between the stuff so the stuff between atoms the stuff between grains of sand it just goes there it's so broad and minuscule at the same time it's just this ever-flowing oscillating motion between like black and white and this duality and the, just does it so well between these three characters and these three worlds and yeah highly recommend highly highly recommend light i feel like this is a series that i would definitely be open to reading more from just because i really loved the world building uh but i don't think it's a series i'm gonna actively seek out if i happen to see a copy laying around at like a thrift store or something i will absolutely pick it up but Based on Goodreads, the remainder of the trilogy has less and less ratings and readings and reviews, and the reviews aren't as great as this one. So I'd be kind of curious, but I'm also not pushing it because I could leave this entire world here and be so satisfied. So that is light. I'm so happy. Ah, I finished it! My first book of May, and we are kind of entering the middle of May, so I need to... That being said, I need to find a new book, my friends, and who's not surprised? Uh, the books on my May TBR are just like not enticing me, especially as something as like brain heavy and intriguing and wild that this was. I feel like I do need to do something a little bit lighter and a little bit more like brain shut down, just kind of like reading to read. Uh, because I was annotating a lot and had a lot of thoughts and I was writing a lot in this book and I love that. I love analyzing and just using a lot of critical thinking and tearing apart just like even the words that were used in this book were just so poignant and very intentional and I love that and I really admire that writing style but I need to find a book now and I might just kind of peruse my shelves a little bit. If not, if I'm not like feeling pulled to anything from my May TBR, I have taken down uh, Trains and Lovers by Alexander McCall Smith. The only reason I'm not like this seems like the next best option, but it does follow four different people. And from my understanding, it kind of like bounces through their backstories, which I love. But we just finished a book that had three characters that it bounced between. And it was a lot and I want to feel invested almost in like one narrative, one character right now. That's kind of the vibe I'm in. So I'm gonna look at my shelves really quickly, see if there's anything that's like really standing out to me. Actually, as I'm saying that, I made direct eye contact with the book and let me grab it because I think that's the one I actually wanna read. Ah! I want to read The Hard Way by Julie Luongo. This is a book that I found in my library book box adventure, so I'll link that video down below. This is kind of like a DWM, Depressed Woman Moving Literary Fiction, but this follows a girl named Lucy, and she's gifted and artistic, but she lacks focus, and she bounces careers and studies, and she also doesn't really want to pursue anything in the creative field. And she's also having a hard time with romance. And then it says, as she discovers more about the people around her, will she finally begin to understand herself? And that sounds like exactly the kind of book I'm looking for. And just something fun, hopefully. Uh, I'm hoping it won't feel as like heavy or plotless or meandering as The Idiot, which I read in April, and that one took me a really long time. But I'm kind of feeling really pulled to this because we're just in, hopefully, one person's head and mind and it's grounded in reality and while it might make me think and it might make me feel like relatable or anything like that it won't be as mind-blowing as light was so I think I'm gonna do this <laughs> not me deviating from my TBR again so I'll check in with you all later
Howdy friends. It is a very leisure Sunday. It is now 5.30 p.m. and it's been lovely. I've been just like hanging out all day in my cozies and it is the last like nice day for a little while so I'm gonna go for a walk pretty soon here. Uh, yesterday was amazing. I went to some garage sales and walked around. It was like a suburban neighborhood that had like all their garage sales going on at like one time so you could just go house to house to house. I got some cute stuff and the party last night was amazing. It was a Grateful Dead themed birthday party. So of course I had to show up in some tie dye and everyone was wearing tie dye like Grateful Dead t-shirts and we had drinks and I got to reconnect with friends and people that I haven't seen in like five or six years, which was amazing. And then they brought out like a wood fire portable oven for pizzas and we cooked pizzas outside and I was there until about like one in the morning. And it was fantastic and I woke up very groggy and feeling it this morning uh, the party vibes left over but let me tell you all I have just been waiting until I feel like I've completed enough stuff today to hop into the hard way I am loving this I picked it up um, not yesterday but the day before yesterday and I got 50 pages in in like almost one sitting because I just could not put it down I am loving it and I've been annotating when I annotate I either choose like a pen just using a pen or a highlighter based on the cover art it needs to match the cover art and the vibe of the book so this was obviously a pink highlighter book I'm loving this we are following a main character named Lucy and it's interesting the first chapter opens up with everything being written in third person so it's talking about Lucy and her family her father has passed away and a year has passed and her older sister is still grieving their mom has now moved on to a new relationship and her and her new boyfriend are in Mexico so Lucy and her sister fly to Mexico to hang out with them and then it turns out that their mom's new boyfriend's kids are there and they're grown and a little bit older than Lucy and she's talking about them drinking together and feeling the awkwardness of hanging out with family and uh, your mom's new boyfriend and his kids so it's really good but then the second chapter is in first person from Lucy's perspective and it's following her journey of uh, finding her way as a journalist she really wants to be a journalist she follows all of these like crime reports that are very uh, touchy definitely touchy a lot of sexual abuse and assault cases that she follows so definitely be cautious going into it because some of it is a little graphic and describing like these different situations and she's talking about being scared uh, wanting to be a journalist so bad but also just kind of feeling like no one around her really supports her at the time she was dating like a 50 year old man I honestly have no idea like what time this is at if this is prior to the Mexico trip or after I don't know and I'm curious about the shift in perspective from third person to first but we're following the same character but I'm absolutely loving it definitely reminiscent of the idiot where it's just it's funny it's uncomfortable it's a lot of growing but that's my little update I'm absolutely loving this book it is such a good summer vibe so far and I definitely want to get further into it so I'm hoping I'll feel motivated after I move my legs to just curl up and read, you know? Do you ever just like want to be in the reading mood but you're worried that you won't? Because I feel that all the time. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go home and read and then I get home and then I'm just staring into a computer or my phone or whatever. So that is my check-in, my friends. My little rambly check-in, but yesterday was just so much fun. It was so nice and I'm definitely feeling so grateful for the friends I have in my life and being able to spend time with all of them. Amazing. And to celebrate my friend, it, it's just so nice. It's such a heartwarming feeling. So that is my little check-in. I will chat with you all soon.
Good morning, friends. It is teenage boy looking og here. It is a cold, rainy morning. Got my iced coffee. It has honestly been like the best morning ever. Um, I woke up super early and I went to my cardio yoga class at seven. Got a coffee. So this is like my third coffee of the day. Feeling good. And then I went grocery shopping early in the morning, got all of it done. Even treated myself to a few cute little clothing items. It's been such a long time since I've bought any like brand new clothing for myself. I buy everything used. So that was really nice. I, yeah, and I got home by like 10, 10 30 in the morning. And last night, very late last night, probably around like midnight or so, I finished The Hard Way by Julie Luongo. Friends, friends, <laughs> I loved this book. I, I, oh, it's so underrated. Okay, this was published in 2008. I looked it up on Goodreads. It only has like 100 ratings, like 130 ratings. So I know Goodreads hasn't been around forever, but only like 100 people have claimed that they've read this. It's really good. <laughs> It's so good. I flew through this. I loved it. I was so intrigued. I was so attached. I loved it. It's stunning. It's beautiful. The only thing that does not make it a five star, because for me this is like a 4.5, it was so freaking close, was like the last page and a half and where things ended. It just wasn't an impactful ending like at all. I don't know where I would have liked it to go, but like where it ended just was not satisfying to me at all especially because throughout the book, it's just like so beautiful and comforting and funny. This book, if you're a fan of The Idiot by Alif Batchuman, I really recommend this book to you because this is a, another female protagonist um, who has a very like dry, ridiculous sense of humor that n other people just like don't understand very goofy personality, but is very sheltered from the world and kind of closed off in her own way, even if she is out socializing with friends or meeting new people, like she just has her heart kind of closed off. And it follows uh, from like the late 1990s all the way to 2001. And what's really cool too is she is an artist. So the start of every single chapter is the chapter title. So this one is crime scene and then underneath it is the medium. A potential medium that she worked with and then the year it was made and which then you know is the year the chapter takes place so this one says crime scene photograph and ink 1994 so it spans from her as like a child what her teenage years were like growing up as it bounces hello you cannot have that coffee as it bounces through then her adult life all the way up until she's 29 i believe or 31, somewhere around there. It does it in a way that doesn't make this feel like a lifelong saga. It's so entertaining. It was page turning, which is something that I really wanted, especially after reading light. I told you all, like I need something that I will just keep me engrossed and wanting me to turn the pages. I felt so invested and in love with Lucy. I annotated so much this like, you know, artistic person who doesn't fully like believe in herself as an artist, suffers from a lot of like imposter syndrome, trying so hard to find love and connection, strange family dynamics, definitely some very uncomfortable topics in terms of like what happened to her when she was very young adolescent. Wow, it was just stunning. It was just beautiful. It talked a lot about sisterly relationships as well as romantic relationships and female friendships. I loved it and it was super cool to see Lucy as a character grow as a person, as an artist, become comfortable in her own skin and with her own art. I freaking loved this. The characters in here as well are so memorable. Like the people that she meets and the people that she dates are so outlandishly funny and ridiculous and over the top. So they're incredibly memorable. This will be sticking with me for a while. Like I already, when I finished it, I just kind of wanted to read it again. It's been so long since I've had that kind of feeling. I feel like the last book I read that made me feel this like happy but also emotional and bittersweet that it was over was like the Pisces by Melissa Broder last summer. I definitely want more books like this, especially something so, I hate to use the term like underground or indie, but it's true. Like not a whole lot of people have heard of this book or read it. And I would definitely love to find more books like this, especially while I'm out thrifting, just taking a chance because the cover does make it seem a little super contemporary as well as maybe a little bit more cheesy hokey romance, which is not the case at all. 
definitely feeling like the idiot vibes by Leif Batuman with just a little bit more, you know, it takes place in New Jersey. So it doesn't have the same vibe as like a Harvard University or traveling to Turkey. <laughs> so the atmosphere is very different, but I freaking love this. So on Goodreads, I gave it four stars. In my heart, it is like a 4.5. And it's only because the last, like how the book ended just like did nothing for me at all, did absolutely nothing. So that is that. And that is where I'm gonna leave you today, my friends. But don't you worry, another vlog will be coming soon. I already started a new book late last night so i'll be vlogging that and my progress with it but thank you all so incredibly much for being here i hope you enjoyed this vlog i would love to hear your thoughts okay so since we read the hard way which has these like tropical things on it let's do some emojis around that like some tropical vibes um this book doesn't even really reference anything tropical other than the beginning the book does open up with her, Lucy, our main character, uh, on a trip to Mexico with her family. But let's do some tropical vibes. I don't know if they're like little umbrellas, like the little paper umbrellas. Uh, you can do some, like you can do like a coconut, a pineapple, the little palm tree. Just have fun with it. Like find some tropical emojis and we'll have like a little tropical party in the comments. But thank you so incredibly much for being here, friends. I appreciate you so much. Hope you all are doing really well. Thank you again for being here. I say thank you like 13 times every single vlog, but thank you. And I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye.